It was opening day across the county as several teams kicked off their spring sports seasons. Welcome to Sportswire, I'm Will Catterley. One of those teams was Glen Allen Guys Lacrosse. The Jaguars this year are looking to improve upon last season where they were ousted in the first round of the playoffs. This season, they played host to Patrick Henry, looking to get off to a quick start. So it's the home season opener for the Glen Allen Guys Lacrosse team. And again, playing Patrick Henry. It didn't take long first half highlights, first quarter highlights. Didn't take long for Glen Allen to get on the scoreboard. Spin move and I'll do it myself, says number 22, Drew Norris. He shoots, he scores. Glen Allen up 1-0, they would add to that. Just moments later, firing, finding the back of the net. He shoots, he scores. Number three was one of the straws stirring the offensive drink for the Jags, Tyler McDerry's, and he scores. And then that from blistering, about almost 10, 15 yards out. Yeah, he puts a biscuit in the basket. Number 25, Parker Hicks. Oh, captain, my captain. Three, nothing Glenn Allen at the half. Second half highlights, switching sides now. Or three, nothing at the first quarter, I should say. Switching sides, second quarter. And yeah, more from number three, getting it going and getting it done early and often. Tyler McDerry's mix scores again. Four nil, Glenn Allen, and boom! Laying down the lumber. Nothing like tough physical play and then finishing with a goal ski. And that's exactly what happens here. Gavin Gallivan is gallivanting after that one. Glenn Allen now up 5 0, and there would be more where that would come from. More from the Jags. When you control the ball and lacrosse, you control the game. And Glenn Allen did just that. He shoots, he scores. This time it's Drew Norris. Once again, Jags late in the second. Looking for more, they'll get more. Firing, fighting the back of the net, he shoots. He scores once again. It was all Jags in this one. This time, John Stottlemyre finds a score sheet. Patrick Henry, couple opportunities, few and far between. Keeper says no. With the stop, goalie nicely done, setting it back up for the offense. Firing, fighting the back of the net. Number 25 gets it done. Parker Hicks once again, and Glenn Allen, off to a great start. 14 to nothing is your final. When it comes to baseball, Region 5C is loaded. In fact, it may be the toughest region in the state. After all, four teams in this year's region all made it to states last season. That includes Freeman and James River, who gave us a glimpse of how many of these games may go down. Back and forth, each play magnified, and of course, extremely tight games that go down to the wire. So it's a battle of two teams that made it to the state playoffs just one year ago, now in the same region. Freeman playing host to James River. Came in good, a little high cheddar, better than good. It's great, gets the strike out there, and still in the first, strike him out, sit him down, Mavs take care of the Rapids. They did get their leadoff runner on, he would be stranded. Meanwhile, you know what they say about a season, if you can stop your opponent in the first inning, score in the first, that's harbingers of good things to come. They got a man on and then the steal of second base by Lee Sowers. Not the sweetest taste in the mouth of James River because the RBI single right up the middle drives Sowers home. And Freeman jumping for joy. They have a one nothing lead and do not beat Cross at Cross Kingsbury at a heck of a day. That RBI single, more from him later. But James River, every half inning, seemed to come back in the second. The steal of third base there and then fly ball deep and you try catching the ball going uphill backwards. Cannot do it. That'll go for an RBI double as number 25, Gets the run scored. It's Kalem early, and James River does score early. They were running all over the place, being very aggressive on the base paths, trying to steal bases. This worked, forcing a Maverick error. Two runs scoring in the inning as Sean Smith comes across two to one after two and a half. What does Freeman do? Well, they come right back. It's Kingsbury again. Don't be cross with Cross Kingsbury. You don't want him cross with you. That's a single. Get things started. 
And then setting it up for this. That's a base hit to right. So now two runners on after the hit by Vinny Fiske. And then that's a ball that gets away out of the dirt. Kingsbury crosses, no pun intended, on the strikeout, but advanced to first. And so we're knotted up at two. We got a whole lot more where this would come from. Number 16 on the mound, by the way, Nate Reed gets in trouble because I got to tell you, Henry Britt, all he does is walk and get on base. Bases were loaded. That led to a run. Finally getting the high cheddar. Really close play at the plate. They're sending him home. He is called out. I did look at it in slow-mo. I think Sam Flippen was out by a hair. Still three to two, Freeman after three. But every half inning, here comes James River trying to make a tremendous play. Errant throw, though, gets away. Rapids score. Mavs played great baseball except for three errors, which would be costly. Wells Butler, the one to get it done. And then James River just playing small ball here, playing great baseball. He gets the sacrifice fly, drives home a run in the form of number 11, Bryson Smith. And now it's 4 3 after three and a half. But Freeman is not done. Seesaw fair, you bet. This game was closer out. Base hit. Couple of runners on now. Lee Sowers on second. Got another man at first base after that and set it up for this. Kingsbury getting crossed with the Rapids. It's a base hit. Sowers comes home. He is safe at home. And Freeman has come back to tie this thing again and they're jumping for joy. As Kingsbury gets it done, another RBI, his second RBI single of the night would lead to this. Shot towards left, the catch, but that's going to work as a sacrifice fly as Vinny Fiske gets it done again. And this time, number eight crosses a plate, Ryder Warren of the Storm. And look out, Sowers. It's 5-4, Freeman after four. They go to the bullpen, does Freeman. Came in good, goes four innings. Only a couple earned runs, and that is an amazing play. I thought he was out at third. He is not. Huge momentum swing because number 18 on the mound, that is a gapper. Gets by center field. One run comes across to score for River. They're back in front on the RBI double. That would lead to this. Getting the strike him out, sit him down. Nicely done. Drew Levisor comes in. Bases were loaded, by the way, so there could have been a lot more damage. Instead, it's just 5-5. Five, five. Later, next inning. Same score, fly ball, runner at third, gonna tag up and score. And now it is six to five after five and a half. They would add one more run with James River, so it's seven five going to the seventh. But Freeman says, it ain't over till we say it is. The base hit by Tucker Cahoon, and there's two runners on. And then this, blistered by Britt. Taylor made double play until the ball gets away. Run comes home to score. Don't look now. It's 7-6 with the winning run not far away. At second base, ball gets away. They throw to third and they tag him out trying to advance. And that would be your ball game. These two teams are going to be great, though, I have a feeling. 7-6, though, James River gets the win in this one. We hit the pitch when we come back. Hermitage and Highland Springs go at it in a girls and guys doubleheader. Plus, Glenn Allen has a new football coach. That's next. Take out meals for just $12.99. Call them. Sherry Pearson. You are the sole surviving heir of the King of Montanopolis, and you are now worth $45 million. Of course it's not real. Come on. Having money isn't about luck. Like that takeout meal. Cook at home instead, you can save thousands a year. Feed me. Feed the pig. Welcome back to Sports Wire, packed house at Glen Allen. Because they have a brand new football coach, Malik Sexton, announced defensive coordinator from within at Glen Allen, now takes over as the head coach after Perry Jones goes to William & Mary. 
I think that's I think it's huge we're keeping the kids here. That's why I say the first thing to do is to start young. Um, because what we already know is that it's talent here in Glenala, Virginia. Um, with, with, with our guys coming back from last year, Camden Tiller, Ahmed Kamara, Dallas Chavis, Nana Utsi, we got we have homegrown guys here from the area, right? That that make, that's now currently making things happen. So I believe if we start here, right, it'll finish here. Sexton was a great defensive coordinator. Best of luck to him as head coach. On the soccer and he shoots, he scores. Herman and wasted any time at home. Their home opener against Highland Springs. Jafeth Macho Camacho shoots and scores. one nothing. Hermitage still first half. Another chance. Great ball in. Off the header and then into that. He shoots. He scores. But, oh, it would be wiped off due to an offsides call. Highland Springs looking to counter. Nice ball in, but just off. Missing the foot of a Springer in the box was a good ball. If he just put his foot out, that might have gone in. Still 1-0, though, and then Hermitage not finished. Coming inside, he falls to the ground. Watch the job by the keeper for Highland Springs. What a great job of getting on that one and hashtag sportsmanship. Picking him up off the, off the pitch there. Springers trying to find the equalizer. Here was another good opportunity. Keeper for Hermitage goes down. He gets nicked, but he uh, corrals that ball and then changing it up. Second half, somehow the ball goes in, he shoots, he scores! I think it's Anthony De La Rosa. Either way, what a great goal. And then check this out. I've known this kid since he was wee little. Aiden Shue, the keeper for the Springers, makes a spectacular save. What a great play, Aiden. I see you, Leanna, Wayne. It's been too long. We need to get together soon. Second half. Springers trying to mount a comeback, a nice ball back into the box, but it would go for naught. And Hermitage hanging on with a 2-0 lead, looking for a third, just goes wide. But the Panthers will get the clean sheet in this one. Final score, Hermitage 2, Highland Springs nothing. On to ladies soccer, second half action, 2-0 Hermitage over Highland Springs. She shoots, it's saved, but moments later, this would not be saved. Back in the Springer's box, she shoots, she scores! Goal! Nul Lamrari! She shoots, she scores, and every goal she scores is complete with a cool looking foot dance. Three nothing Hermitage at that point here in the second half. Every corner, should be a great goal opportunity. It is here for Hermitage. Check out this nice little pass here. Back heeling it and then firing. And it just goes wide off the boot of Brandy Tillery. Still though, here she comes again. She shoots, she scores. Nobody can stop Noor. Noor Lamrari scores again. And Hermitage in complete control. Another foot dance to boot, and it's 4-0 at that point. Panthers on the prowl looking for more goals, and they'd get them. Nice pass inside, and then nice hard finish off the right foot. She shoots. She scores. Number 17 doing the honors. Kenyuri Rangel, the defender, finding a goal as a junior. Here she comes again, bringing it up the field. Hermitage has seven on the board at this point. Gonna make it eight and end this one. She shoots, she scores. Kieran Cedillo gets it done. And Hermitage takes care of business. Eight to nothing is your fun. It's back to guys lacrosse when we return. Godwin opens at home with an exciting matchup with James River. While deep run guys soccer kicks off as they host first Colonial. Highlights are straight ahead. Morning, Gary. We are GetSchooled.com. You want a college education, don't you? You know you do. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but I don't know where to start. That's why we're here. We're free, handsome, oh, I think we're breathtaking, and here to guide you through every step of the way, starting with attendance. <laughs> Gary, financial aid forms. Biology homework, Chief. I got this. <laughs> Is that brand? <laughs> Thank you. 
colleges love extracurricular activities. Uh, chess really isn't my thing. I got this. Doesn't matter. Go ahead. Picking a college, man. You and us go together like tacos and Tuesday. And I love tacos. Fire and ice. Those don't really go together. Go to GetSchool.com for more info. Welcome back to Sportswire. More guys lacrosse coming at you. Godwin at home taking on James River. Already up 2-0. But this guy, number nine, would be a problem. Scott Benny in the Jets. Makes it 2-1. to He shoots. He scores. Rapids on the board. Back comes Mills Godwin. Check this out. All the way by himself. Fires, finds the back of the net. He shoots. He scores. Will Rockwell does well. And he gets the goal right back for Godwin, who has a 3-1 to one lead in the second quarter. Still in the second, back comes James River. Firing a blistering shot, and that cannot be stopped. It's Benny in the Jets again. James River making it 3-2, to two, and they were not finished. Moments later, Benny, this time he passes it off. Fires, not corralled though, and the rebound in front. He shoots, he scores. Gavin O'Connell gets his name in the ledger. We're all knotted up at three. This game would go back and forth right now. At this moment, James River, the Rapids had rapid momentum. Firing, finding the back of the net. Shoots, scores. Number 30 doing the honors, it's Luke Johnson. But not to be outdone, Eagles came storming back after, oh my goodness. Guys, lacrosse is physical. That would be uh, unnecessary roughness on James River, which would lead to this. The alley-oop, as it would be in basketball, turned into a lacrosse play. He shoots, he scores. What a great give. And number 30, Tim Hedrick gets it done. We're all knotted at four as we go to the third quarter. In the third, here come the Eagles firing, finding the back of the net. It's Hedrick again. Timmy tallies another. And Godwin has a 5-4 lead. Rapids have answers rapidly. Wrapping around the net and finding the back of it. Number 14 this time, Lewis Washburn. More from James River. Rapids looking to retake the lead. And they would not there, but getting the ground balls was paramount for James River. They get that one, fire and find the back of the net. Guess who? It's Benny once again, Scott Benny. And then number 34, James River. Oh, the keeper just can't get to it. Luke Johnson finds another one. And all of a sudden, James River not just up by one. They got a couple goal advantage here. Now up 7-5 as uh, we go to the fourth. No problem for that. Check that shot out from 15 yards out. Are you kidding me? He should be fired up. He is pumped. Jet Johnson jacks one home. And Godwin looking to tie it up. Down 7-6. We're knotted up at seven. Brand new ball game. Brooks, Gil Martin gets that one. Two go. All knotted at seven, but then James River late made a push. He shoots, he scores. It's Mr. Benny. Scott Benny ruled the day, led all scores in this one. James River would take an 8-7 lead and not look back. They win this one. 10-7 is your fun. Back to the pitch we go, and what a doozy for an opener. Deep run and first Colonial, both these teams, playoff teams. First Colonial made it to states. They would have... Some momentum early on, a couple of great free kick opportunities. This one going to find the bag of that. He shoots, he scores, but he is ruled offside. Oh, number 15, James Olinson denied the goal. Great ball in for the Wildcats, heading the other way now. And then another one crosser, but the keeper is there. We are still scoreless. More first half action. Check this to River the Alpha, number five. And then Firing it off his foot in midair. He shoots, he scores. Top play nominee, number 27, Connor Leary delivers. And Deep Run has a 1 0 lead with still 18 minutes and change to go in the first half. Wildcats had more chances to extend it on the header, 
But easy squeezy lemon peasy goes right to the keeper. Let's go second half action. This time it's first Colonial off of the corner and that one ooh, just goes wide. A little bit too much mustard. Number 15 though, you're gonna hear his name a lot for Colonial. James O'Lanson with a great ball in and then check this pass out and then one more and then oh, just fired too quick. And Owen Newman knows it. Still, Colonial down one nil. Deep run trying to hang on, but uh, Colonial's got other ideas. This one is a foul in the box, and we all know what that means. That means a penalty kick. Uh, and you just got to guess right and hope you get there if you're the keeper. Guessed right, but couldn't quite get there. He shoots, he scores, and Bryce Jones, the senior, finds the equalizer. Deep run and FC. DR and FC all knotted at one apiece, all square. Still tons of time left. Wildcats had opportunities to get this back going, but Colonial takes care of that one. No harm, no foul. Wildcats more pressure in the opponent's end. That one goes, oh my goodness, right off the crossbar. A little too high and too much mustard. This 27 was edging for another one. But then watch this, watch this. I know you're seeing part of the the uh, side of the press box there, but my goodness, the footwork, the firing, the goal! James Olanson, are you kidding me? He shoots, he scores, a brilliant display of footwork. Still seven and a half to go though. Two to one, first Colonial ahead. Wildcats trying to find the equalizer and get this one back all square at two. That would not be a bad deal for deep run at all. And that was one of their best chances. Just goes wide to the, actually to the near side of the goal. Here it is, firing it in as the seconds tick down. First Colonial gets the save. They get the win. These two teams are really good. Two to one, though, is your final. Remember, if you have questions or comments about the show, just send me an email to this address, sportswire at henrico.k12.va.us. And you can always... Follow us on X and watch us on YouTube. I can't wait to see y'all next time on SportsWire.